This 50-year-old male patient presented with multiple Miller Class II gingival recessions of the right maxilla. Prior to surgery, root sensitivity without periodontal disease was the main problem. The preoperative pocket depth, recession, and recession width of the affected teeth are seen here. The values were measured always mid-buccally. The surgical treatment plan for recession coverage in this patient aimed to achieve a complete coverage of the recession using the coronally advanced modified tunnel in combination with Geistlich mucograft as an alternative to the standard connective tissue graft procedure. The Bernese instrument set from Stoma, designed for optimal tunnel preparation, is used for the surgery. Following administration of local anesthesia and application of betamethasone, a corticosteroid used to minimize post-operative swelling, the root surfaces are prepared with a Gracie curette for root planing before any incision is made. The mechanical treatment is terminated when the soft tooth structure is completely removed and the root surface feels hard. The gingival displacement is then measured using a periodontal probe. The intracellular incision is made with a curved tunneling knife. The instrument is kept continuously in contact with the bony surface to avoid the risk of soft tissue perforation. The mucoperiosteal pouch is elevated just past the mucogingival junction. After finishing the tunnel preparation, the papillae are elevated from the interdental bone with a papilla elevator. Again, a curved tunneling knife is used to finalize the tunnel preparation. Care must be taken in order to create a deep pouch beyond the mucogingival junction while keeping the tip of the interproximal papilla attached to the teeth below the proximal contact point. The depth of the pouch is measured with the help of the periodontal probes and the presence of a bony balcony can be assessed.
a Gracie curette is used to mobilize and extend the pouch to avoid any tension in the subsequent coronal advancement. Transversal sounding of the tunnel is performed without detaching the papillae peaks. Geistlich mucograft is removed from its package, taking care not to compress the matrix. Geistlich mucograft is a unique 3D collagen matrix designed specifically for soft tissue regeneration as an alternative for autogenous grafts. In this surgery, Geistlich mucograft is used with the coronally advanced tunnel instead of the connective tissue graft, eliminating the need for harvesting tissue from the patient. The device is measured and cut to a size of 7 mm wide and 30 mm long in dry state. A 6-0 Vicryl Ethicon suture is used to introduce Geistlich mucograft into the tunnel. The needle enters the papilla from the outside to the inside of the tunnelized flap and passes behind each papillae, exiting at the largest recession in tooth 2-6. A vertical mattress suture is introduced into the leading edge of the dry, trimmed Geistlich mucograft in order to slide it under the tunnel. The needle passes through the tunnel behind each papilla back to tooth 2-4. The suture exits at the same level of the first stitch on the mesial aspect of the tunnel, but more apically. The dry Geistlich mucograft is inserted into the tunnel with a slightly oblique angle and then gently pulled laterally through the tunnel. The matrix moistens rapidly with the patient's own blood as a result of its marked hydrophilicity. Geistlich mucograft is then fixed to the elevated flap. A horizontal mattress suture is placed at the base of the papilla. The suture passes to the palatal aspect, back to the buccal aspect, around the splintered teeth, and is closed over the contact point. Each papilla is fixed with the same procedure. With this suturing technique, the elevated flap is advanced coronally and fixed one millimeter above the cemento enamel junction. Care must be taken that the Geistlich mucograft remains completely submerged under the tunnel and that the flap, together with the matrix, are fully immobilized in a coronally advanced position. Finally, a sling suture is placed at tooth 2-4. For a successful outcome, 
it's critical that the flap and the matrix are fully immobilized in an adequate coronally advanced position. Recommended post-operative care management by Dr. Aroka. Suitable analgesia. Mouth rinsing with 0.2% chlorhexidine two times a day during 15 days post-op. No tooth brushing during 15 days post-op on the operated area. Brush teeth with a surgical toothbrush after 15 days post-op on the operated area. Before surgery, 15 days after surgery, uneventful healing. Seven months after surgery, complete recession coverage.